In this video, I'll show you how to create your first Vivado design for the Pink Z1FPGA board. The design consists of a GPIO IP core connected to the ARM Cortex A CPU in the processing system block, which allows us to control peripherals such as LEDs and buttons directly from the CPU. The Python code running in Jupyter Notebook will control the GPIO, which can turn the LED on or off. Before we get started, head over to this website and download the board files and constraint files for the pink Z1 board. If you're using another Zinc board, like the Zybo, you can download the board files from Digilent's GitHub repository. As for the constraint files, you can also find them in this repository. Here are the board files and constraint files I downloaded. You'll need to extract them first. For the board files, you'll need to copy the folder and paste it into the Vivado installation directory, specifically into this path. If you're using an older version of Vivado, the board files are stored in a different folder. You'll find them in this location instead. After copying the board files folder, make sure to restart Vivado if it's already open. Now, Open Vivado and create a new project. Give it a name. For example, I'll call mine part underscore one underscore GPIO. For the project location, make sure not to put it inside a folder with spaces in its name, because that can cause errors later on. Select the Boards tab, then choose your board. In my case, I'm going to use the pink Z1 board. Now, click on Create Block Design from the menu. To add an IP block, you can use this button, this one, or simply right-click and choose Add IP. Search for the Zinc IP and add it to your block design. Click on Run Block Automation. This will automatically configure the Zinc IP using the presets from the board file. Here, a connection to the DDR and fixed I.O. will be created automatically. Now, add another IP, the GPIO. Double-click it to open the settings. Enable all the outputs and set the width to 4, since the pink Z1 board only has 4 LEDs. Set the default value to 5, or any value you like. That way, as soon as you program the FPGA, the LEDs will light up according to that value. Next, click on Run Connection Automation. Select the SAXI port and click OK. This will connect the GPIO to the processing system through the AXI interconnect. A system reset block will also be added to handle resetting the cores. Click on Regenerate Layout to make the block diagram look tidy and organized. Now let's create an output port from the GPIO output and connect it to the LEDs. If you open the address editor, you'll see that the GPIO has a base address. You'll need this address later in your Python code to access the GPIO. Right-click on the block design and select Create HDL Wrapper. This lets you generate a wrapper file for the block design, which you can also call from another HDL top module if needed. Click on Generate Block Design then set the synthesis option to global. The number of jobs is based on the number of CPU cores in your computer. You can adjust this setting to speed up the process. This process will generate the HDL for all the IP cores in your block design. Keep in mind, every time you make changes to the block design or its IPS, you'll need to regenerate it. Now, Open the Design1 wrapper file 
and you'll see the LED output port. We're going to connect this to the actual FPGA pins that drive the LEDs on the board. To do that, we'll use the constraint file we downloaded earlier. Click on Add Sources and choose Add Constraints. Then add the constraint file we downloaded earlier. Open the constraint file, scroll to the section for the LED definitions, and uncomment that part. The signal name LED must match the port name in the top level wrapper. And don't forget to save the constraint file after making the changes. Click on Run Synthesis, set the number of jobs as needed, and then click OK. Wait until the process finishes. Once Synthesis is finished, proceed with Run Implementation and click OK. Then wait for the process to complete. Once implementation is finished, click on Generate Bitstream and then click OK. Wait for the process to complete. While it's running, let's take a quick break for a message. Do you want to learn AI acceleration on FPGA? This project-based online course offers practical insights into designing AI accelerators, specifically a CNN algorithm for handwritten digit classification. The focus of the course is on the system design level on how to integrate a CNN module written in Verilog HDL with the application processor running Linux. The final result of this project is a web application for taking a handwritten digit and then sending this data to be processed with the CNN accelerator on the FPGA. On average, a speed-up factor of 12 times is achieved by using this accelerator compared to the CPU. This course is suitable for students or FPGA engineers developing AI acceleration projects and anyone interested in learning and building FPGA-based systems. All the source code is available within this course. A complete Udemy 30-day money-back guarantee if you are not satisfied with this course, allowing you to study with no risk. See you within the course. Once the bitstream generation is finished, you can open the implemented design. Here you'll see the resource utilization of the FPGA. Since our design is very small, it only uses a few resources. In the timing summary, you can see that both setup and hold times are met. You can also click on Report Utilization to view a detailed breakdown of the resources used by our design. The Axie GPIO only uses a few LUT and registers. We can even zoom into the device view to see exactly which resources are being used. Now we're ready to export the design for programming the FPGA board. Go to the IP integrator, then from the file menu select Export, Export Block Design. A common mistake is trying to do this while still in the implementation flow. In that case, you won't see the Export Block Design option. So make sure you're in the IP integrator flow first. Name the block design file part1 gpio.tcl. Next, we need to export the bitstream file. Name it the same part1 
gpio.bit. Now, go to your project folder and you'll find these two files. There's one more file we need, the .hwh file. In newer versions of Vivado, you can find it in this location, but in older versions it may be stored elsewhere, so just search for it if needed. Once you find it, rename the .hwh file so it matches the names of the .tcl and .bit files. These three files will be uploaded to the FPGA board. I already have the pink Z1 booted into Linux. If you're not sure how to set this up, check out my previous video. I've put the link in the description below. We can log into the board using SSH to access its file system. Create a new folder to store our design files, then upload the three files to the FPGA. Once the upload is complete, you can check through the console. Here are the files we just uploaded. Our next step is to access the Jupyter Notebook. You can create a new folder and rename it. Inside that folder, create a new notebook file and give it any name you like. Now we're ready to create the Python code. Start by importing the required libraries and press Shift plus Enter to run the cell. Next, program the FPGA using the overlay class, making sure the path to the bitstream file is correct. Once you execute this cell, the FPGA is programmed, and the LED will turn on according to the default value we set earlier in Vivado. Now, we can initialize the GPIO by setting its base address and memory mapped range. You can get these values from the Vivado address editor. In this case, the range is 64K, which is 0 to FFFF in hexadecimal. So here, we set the range to FFFF. Now the GPIO is ready. We can write a value to it, and once you execute the cell, you'll see the LED light up according to that value. We can also use the read method to get the value from the GPIO register. This function will return the current value stored in the GPIO register. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and share. See you in the next one.